Well, I am turning you off now live. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. And welcome to Impers Virtual Events Week. Um, we had a great day yesterday kicking off with our Impers Save Run Sustainability. Thank you again for everybody that passed in that. It was, uh, was a brilliant day. Um, and uh, really raise the awareness uh, for sustainability in the supply chain, which is something Imbra is very passionate about, and it's one of our core pillars. Um, another one of those core pillars is the Imbra Marine Schools Guide. And this is a product that will be very well known to most of you uh, viewing uh, this morning. Um, but perhaps what you don't know is um, a lot about the work that's going on behind the scenes with the Marine Sports Guide, some of the innovation, some of the product developments, and some of the things that we've been doing over the last couple of years and are rolling out in 2020 and 2021. Um, this presentation will be led by IMPA's Head of Digital, which is Don Scott. And uh, I'm going to hand over to Tom in a moment, who will just let you know some of these things um, that, that are going on. And can I also just remind that we have got the Green Sword Guide, guide booth as well. And our uh, project manager, Hannah, can be uh, accessed through the, um, through the MSG booth. But for now, um, Tom, can you? you uh, let us know what we've been up to with Marine Source Guide this year. Yeah, absolutely. So um, this year has been a very big year for the Marine Source Guide, uh, especially on the digital front. Um, what we've been doing over the last few years, as many may be aware, is actually entirely assessing and overhauling how we see the Marine Stores Guide um, um, as a digital product. Um, over um, almost two, two years, we've now been developing a brand new API system, which is a cloud-based system, which allows us to host the MFG, all of the data, online, uh, in a cloud yeah, system that allows us to access it at the same time, 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 What that API allows us to do is now have a base layer for our MSGO. Um, hold on, Tom, just sure. a moment. We've got, Couple of... we've got a bit of technical issue with, with the mics. Okay, just one second. Muting mic. I, I think I've muted my mic. Yeah, I, I believe you're muted, so we might be okay. Can you let us know if that's better? I think we might be okay. Excellent, yes, thank you, uh, Michael. Thanks, Alexander, thanks, guys. Sorry about that. I believe it's because we're in the same, uh, same socially distanced room. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Stephen, you go ahead and mute every time we're chatting, we should be okay. Right, brilliant, we're learning as we go. Yeah, so, uh, after the API, obviously, that what that does is give us a basis that allows us to develop brand new digital products for the Marine Stores Guide that will um, basically be available internet wide across the world. The first of which that we developed, which many of you may be aware of, is the uh, Marine Stores Guide online service, which you can see here. The Marine Stores Guide online service is a free uh, benefit to all MSG data license holders that we launched earlier this year, around March, April time. Um, what that allows you to do is uh, browse the Marine Stores Guide catalog fully, uh, search by keyword, um, category, or MSG six digit code. And once you've found the items you need, you can actually add them to a handy shopping cart and export them uh, to a CSV file that can be shared with uh, internal use or with your um, uh, relevant suppliers. 
we found that since we launched the Marine Stores Guide Online service, uh, we've had um, a very lovely, steady increase in users. And we're now um, at hundreds of registered users around the world who have uh, MSG data licenses, uh, many of which who are using the service multiple times per day um, or multiple times per week, which is fantastic. Uh, and early reviews of the service have been very, very much positive. Um, and people have been stating that it's uh, easy to use, lightning fast speeds, which is exactly what we wanted out of it. Um, now that the MSG uh, online service or the MSGO has been launched for a small period of time, we're now uh, looking to embark on what we can do next with the service. We're always going to be developing and improving for it. And that leads us on to um, what we've been developing over the last few months, um, which we're going to talk about briefly today. Um, What our team have been doing over the last few months is actually developing a brand new suite of images for the Marine Stores Guide Provisions Codes, which is the 00 codes. So what we now have is every single listed item has been photographed, edited and uh, sourced and prepared, ready to be used on the Marine Stores Guide online. For the first time, this is allowing us to have beautiful, high-definition imagery that, as you can see, as we'll scroll through some of them here, um, is really, really, uh, it's, just, it's just great for us to be able to have something like this. And this is what the uh, MSGO and the API system is allowing us to do. Um, with our new images, we have covered everything within the provisions code, which is uh, specialty items, uh, as well as all the goods from baking goods and spices all the way through to fresh meat and uh, frozen fish, all, all, all produce from around the world. 1,100 items. Yes, there's 1,100 items that we've had here. So for the first time, we're going to be able to share this with everyone, which we're very excited to do. And will we be, be rolling out the... Um the, the uh, provisions catalogue. Yes, yeah, so it, it won't be printed, will it? No, it won't be printed. So this at the moment is going to first of all appear as a benefit to our um, MSG online users. Uh, the beauty of our API system allows us to upload these files and then they'll immediately appear for all of the users that log in. Um, what's excellent here is that we're actually ready to launch this and within the coming weeks, all of our MSGO license, um, data license holders, all of our MSGO users will be able to access these uh, images the next time they log in. If you keep an eye on the IMPA channels, we'll be announcing the exact um, release date of these items, uh, but you can expect them um, very, very soon. What's next? So um, that's talking about just briefly what we're developing at the moment for the Marine Stores Guide Online service. Uh, the, we will also be uh, releasing in the coming uh, 2021 um, period a um, brand new set of developers. Sorry, I'm having some technical issues with my slides here. I do apologize. We actually have two um, brand new roadmaps uh, ideas that we're developing for the Marine Stores Guide online service, which is coming after the provisions images. Uh, would you like us to discuss them a little? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So we're always looking to develop for the MSG online um, and for the MSG data. Uh, our next version of the MSGO is going to be released in 2021. And what we're developing for that is two uh, key items currently. The first of which is, in our, in our view, um, going to be uh, very, very uh, important for many users. And, and that is the actual ability to create custom catalogs for the Marine Stores Guide Online. 
what this will allow users to do is self-manage the ability to go onto the Marine Stores Guide online service and click on and off categories and subcategories um, to suit their needs. As we all know, the Marine Stores Guide has over 50,000 items and many of which um, may not be needed for day-to-day -day activities for many people. So what you're going to be able to do with our data for the first time is create your own personalized subset of data. This will be through the MSGO panel. And what you'll be able to do is have every time you log in, it shows you just what you need and when you need it. Um, once you've set some, uh, some perimeters of what you want to see, that will be immediately accessible. And if you want to change that in the future, of course, you'll be able to self-manage this system yourself and log in and change, and change whatever you want to see there. The second item that we are able to do due to our brand new API system is actually enhance the MSG data. What this allows us to do is for the first time in a long time is improve on and add to what you can see across the board on the MSG data. We're going to have the option to have tables and charts shown on the MSGO system, extended uh, text and descriptions, more imagery, and for the first time, highly rich media such as video files and PDF documents that attach to each individual item. If there's a particular item that could benefit from having a table and charts with different units of measure or information such as that, you'll be able to see that through the online service. And the same goes for if there's a video, video tutorial or perhaps a, um, a guideline document um, showing you how to use an item as such. That will all be available through the MSGO, which uh, is fantastic really, because it allows you to further explore what you may need, discover your needs and find out more about them. You'll be able to compare much easier than ever before with the Marine Stores Guide data. This also is set in our roadmap. Uh, we've been, we work uh, incredibly closely with our partners at Fuji Trading Company to uh, develop for the Marine Stores Guide Online Service. And both of these features uh, are, are currently pegged to be released in uh, 2021. Um, so there's a lot going on there. Um, we've also been reaching out to our users as of recently and many of which who use the service quite frequently. And we've been asking them for their feedback also. Um, uh, so there's going to be fixes included um, that uh, own the current service as well. And this will be regularly explored across our team. Okay. We are going out to the industry to ask for um, uh, editorial yes. updates and information, yes. aren't we, Dom? Yes. We are, <clears throat> we're looking at um, uh, an, an enhancement of, um, of, of some of the core data. Yes, absolutely. We yeah. do about 1,700 um, code changes a year at the moment, don't we? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, so absolutely. As Steve has just pointed out, one of the most important things that we need to do whilst we're also embarking on continuing, in fact, the digital journey of the Marine Stores Guide, what we actually need to uh, address and soon with, with, with our users of the Marine Stores Guide is an editorial overhaul of our data. So as Tim just said, we, we have about 1,700 items a year that get um, amended, added, removed, improved upon in the Marine Stores Guide. And we need to ensure that that's also at the forefront. So what we're going to be embarking on to close out the remainder of this year whilst other developments are happening for our digital products is we're going to reach out to you, our users, and we're going to ask for your input on what you think should be added, removed, amended within the Marine Stores Guide online and within the Marine Stores Guide data set entirely. Uh, we'll be uh, embarking on that campaign in the coming weeks. And uh, if you stay in tune with our input channels via email, social media, and of course, our uh, project management team will get in touch with all of our um, current license holders and book purchasers, and we'll be getting in touch with you and asking for your really incredibly valuable input on this.
Okay. John, would it be helpful just if we went over these key points again in summary? Absolutely. So, yeah, I think so. Yeah. You know, we started we started with Marine Stores Guide. That's now out and being used by our our data users Absolutely. out there, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, to summarize a little here, the Marine Stores Guide online service uh, or the MSGO has been uh, out now for um, roughly six months. Uh, our users are having a great time with it. And if you're a data license holder that hasn't yet had uh, access to this, please head over to our booth, get in touch with Hannah, our project manager, who will ensure that you get onto the service and get using it yourself. This thing is, uh, uh, we're very proud of it and um, we're sure that it's gonna become incredibly valuable for all of our data license holders. So make sure you're not missing out on this free benefit currently uh, by accessing it. It will allow you to view the MSG catalog in its entirety, like never before, essentially, as a very, very uh, easy to use, very fast, and creating custom catalogs are available through that. And what we've also ran over briefly today is our brand new uh, provisions imagery. This is a, a fantastic project that we've been working on for a few months where we've taken the entire 1100 items from the provisions uh, codes, the 00 codes, and uh, they are going to be available to view in full for all of our MSGO uh, uh, users, which are data license holders, a free benefit. Uh, also, we're going to be um, working with our partners at Fuji Trading Company to get uh, specific uh, international uh, items um, for use on vessels where they may have a particular um, nationality of crew that uh, could be helpful. That will come in the future also. Um, if you have a look at the chat, our project manager Hannah has shared a, a, a handy snapshot video of the service that we have, um, that we have uh, issued out before, where you can find out um, exactly what it does, see it in action, and um, have, a little, have a little look there. Further to that, what we just quickly mentioned is uh, two very big future developments for the MSGO service, which are custom catalogs, which we're quite confident many, many people are going to be happy to see, uh, which will allow you to switch on and off um, categories and subcategories as you see fit for your daily access to the MSG and your daily work life. And further to that, we're enriching the MSG data adding videos, adding the potential for PDF documents, uh, more images, tables and charts, all through the MSGO. Um, over time, this system is going to be, um, we're quite confident this is going to be a one-stop shop for you to be able to handle everything in your in your day-to-day -day activity. Um, so I think we've seen a couple of uh, questions uh, coming in here while we've been on the session. Mm -hmm. um, so if anyone hasn't asked a question yet that may want to ask a question, please feel free to head to the stage chat and type it in, and we'll just jump through a couple of them right now. Just just mention there, Don, that the stage chat is it's on the right of the screen. Yes, it's on so the right. The screen probably says event stage. And, and it's, yes. it's a stage. So if you head to the, yeah, yeah. thank you, Steve. I think most yeah. people have Yeah, I think, that. yeah. But, but just to clarify, just to help if anyone's uh, missing out on the chat option here, on the right hand side of your screen, you'll see a uh, chat button. Once you've clicked on that, you'll have options for stage and event. If you're chatting into stage, then we'll be, um, then we'll be able to see what you're asking us today. So um, let me just scroll up here and we'll just have a look through of some of the questions. So um, I, I see this one. Will people be able to hear me from here, or is... possibly? Okay. If not, so I see that Michael is talking about derivative or variant codes. Um, I think that that might be talking about developing something on top of the marine yes. source guide. Yes. Yeah. Um, that isn't something that there is various talk, and mm. we we. Oh, we can hear you. Great. Okay. Thank so, you. Um, Thank you, Michael. Yeah, this question, Michael, there are there are various groups looking at and various organizations, various 
companies as well looking at creating um, their own um, their own uh, uh, development of the code. The, the key issue is perhaps developing um, the unit of measure or perhaps um, adding more specific details in around something like spare parts or something. But let's be clear about IMPA's goal with this. We are open to working with others, but our focus is on the uh, the, the, the core MSG, the six-digit data. We know it's not perfect. There is uh, enhancements and developments, changes and edits that we need to make, but we are uh, embarking on a, a, a permanent program uh, to develop the core data and make it more accessible and more flexible for how people use it. Of course, the Marine Stores Guide is emotive and, and, and in that um, each company uses it in a different way. So whilst some supply-based organizations and manufacturers would like to see thousands and thousands of codes added in, there, there are also a number of ship owners and managers that would actually like to see a more condensed reduced. So we've got to try and manage this, this balance. We have our focus and our goal, which Don set out today, and then uh, we are open to working with others that um, that perhaps uh, are, are looking to do different things. And there's been a, an industry group formed, and we've been we've been talking with them over 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 recent months about uh, about a possible involvement with them. So hopefully that that answers your question on that one, Michael. Um, but if you want to have a more specific dialogue about that, certainly happy to do that. So somebody else um, also talking about um, uh, the, the pictures. So um, it, it's taken probably most of lockdown for us to you know, create this portfolio of photographs uh, with the newly added code descriptions for the 1100 items that Don has, uh, has, has presented today. Um, but we see pictures as being very important to enhance the data, uh, to enhance the marine stores guide, and that and that's something that we we we're committed to uh, to working on. So I'm really excited for you to see the the provisions um, photography um, because it really is uh, it really is uh, you know beautiful photographs uh, and new descriptions for for uh, for the industry to use. You're welcome, Michael. <laughs> Have we got any other questions? Uh, Mohammed here has asked about the uh, API system for internal systems development. Uh, when will it be available with details? So if, if I'm right in what you're asking here, Mohammed, um, our API system, of course, has been built uh, with the scope in mind that uh, third party, what we would consider third party, so anyone outside of IMPA, will be able to tap into that API system and allow them to uh, have that feed directly into their own management systems. Um, we currently aren't uh, developing that at the moment. Uh, what we're doing uh, right now is spending some time with our API and developing our own um, internal products that obviously go out to you guys. Uh, but in the future, um, we don't have dates, I'm afraid, but in the future, um, we're now finally at a point where the industry is uh, uh, potentially slowly, many more people are gonna be ready for those sort of systems. Of course, many people don't have systems that can tap in and get an API token, an allowance to our API, but we will absolutely be developing that down the line, but it's not on our current development roadmap, but of course it will be. That's one of the main reasons we embarked on this. Um, uh, but that will come down the line. So I hope that answers your question there, Mohammed. Um, there's a question about um, categorizing yes. the provisions codes for, by nationalities. Um, there aren't any plans to do that, but of course what we would expect would be for you to perhaps do that internally. What I would say 
is that a great number of the products take into account um, uh, the, the preferences of the, the differing nationalities are on board. So there are uh, quite a number within that 1100 um, that are speciality items. You perhaps uh, wouldn't want um, to be stocking all of those or as a ship owner manager, you wouldn't want to be specifying all of those depending on your crew variants. Most ship owners um, might tell you that from a provisions viewpoint, there could be anywhere between 500 and 700 core items, um, but perhaps even less. The 1100 therefore represents um, a, a quite a number of speciality um, spices, herbs and ingredients that are specific to nationality. So um, could be an idea to put those into groupings. Um, uh, one thing we have talked about in the past was perhaps um, linking up with the catering side of things and looking at menus and linking provisions code to menus. But I think the idea here is that this is where it's up perhaps to those um, creative thinkers out there to come up with their own ideas using the core MSG and then to and then to um, and perhaps offer something like that. So perhaps you would offer that to your customers. Um, all right, we've got something here. A couple more questions. Right. How right. often ship management companies updating their codes? We tend to see some old codes coming through the RFQ. It may be wise to consider keeping the bank of all codes as an option when you release the data. Okay. Um, there are, you know, this is um, legacy data. There are codes that are very old. Um, we, we tend to monitor the situation. There are relatively few that we delete, but there are some codes that we know are for obsolete products. They are deleted. Um, we update the data every six months with new codes and we advise of the new codes. Um, one of the things about the API system and where, where we see the future, Michael, is that Actually, uh, ship owners and managers um, through, their, uh, through their own internal systems will link directly into the API. That means that in the future, the data will be um, able to be updated much more, uh, much quicker and will go directly into the, into the system. So we're working towards that journey. The roadmap that Don was talking about would see in the future owners, managers, and suppliers linking into our API. And that's commonplace on a lot of other uh, industry platforms, as you probably know. Um, so we do keep the old codes. We are, we are aware of them. And, and by the way, we have a service, the sort of you know, information service through the uh, info website that if you did have a specific code that you couldn't identify, then do please, uh, do please let us know. Um, Douglas uh, at Colin Metcalf and Co. got a question here. Don stated that the MSG provision data is available to license holder. I can see the need to sell license, but not important to encourage non license holder, possibly on board crew, to have some degree of access. Yes, I mean, at the moment we're rolling out the Marine Stores Guide um, provisions code to the, uh, to the data license holders. That's an additional service to them. We're starting there. But a wider rollout will have to be part of the plan. Um, we're, we're discussing how we do that, Douglas, and uh, um, you know, most definitely, we need to make that something that's widely accessible. Um, hope that hope that answers. Um, I mean, one of the things about this um, is that we also see in the future the ability to create smaller specific catalogs that could perhaps sit on. Uh, you know, mobile devices, tablets, and so on, um, on, on board ships. So there's all sorts of ideas that we're, we're exploring to try and develop the Marine Stores Guide and make it, as I said earlier, as flexible as possible for the marketplace. We have um, one more question here that was a bit further up from Anders, who has asked, uh, will the publisher's license include the new provisions photos yes most definitely yes absolutely yes 
Um, of course, we'll see it first of all uh, through the MSGO because of our API system allowing us to distribute that almost instantly once uploaded. But yeah, it will also be through our uh, publisher's license, data license as well. Okay. Welcome, Douglas. Nice to hear from you. Any more questions? Anything we not answered here? I think we may have covered every question. What I would say about Marine Stores Guide is, you know, it's not a perfect uh, product. We have work to do, but there is a team in place working on this, and it, it, it's there are several people um, in the editorial team out in Japan. And our connection at the Impro office and with our with our network, we're also very lucky to be supported by two or three large ship owning companies that are sharing data and ideas with us. And we, it, we it's a it, it's a it's a continuous journey. We've got we've got lots to do. So I would encourage you to keep an eye on Marine Trader, keep an eye on the Impro websites because there's going to be developments uh, with with this product as we. As we, as we move into the future, we have to respond to the needs of the marketplace. Okay. If there's no more questions then, I believe all that's left to say is thank you very much everyone for your time. If you do have any questions about the MSG at all, uh, there is a booth in the expo section of the, of the event that you can head over to. Hannah is uh, going to be there to look after any questions. Uh, other than that, you can get in touch with us for anything a bit more specific and we'll be happy to carry on any discussions uh, after the event. But um, yeah. Do, do visit the other booths as well. We've Absolutely. got, we've got uh, uh, 40 or more of our exhibitors, yes. our London um, exhibitors and, and around the world. And, and we're, we're grateful for their enthusiasm and Absolutely. participation and, and for getting involved. So go and say hello to them. You can uh, you can network with them. You can have a chat. Um, sorry, we can't be face to face. I'm really looking forward to when we can. It's going to be emotional. <laughs> but um, in the meantime, um, uh, stay safe and, and uh, thanks for taking part. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye bye.